Welcome to Cycle Talk. On this episode, we introduce you to Fat Bob. He's a Harley Davidson with real character. Then we ride Kawasaki's Ninja 650L, twin cylinder 650 mid range machine that's learner approved. We've got contour cameras to win, we go into iPhone oil, but first, let's kick it all off with the Yamaha MT09 Tracer. Now this is the Yamaha Tracer. It's the latest addition to Yamaha's Torque Sports family. Now it uses the uh, very popular MT09 Yamaha for its underpinnings. So we reckon Yamaha should probably start a new category called Torque Touring because this is a touring bike. Yamaha is promoting it as a weekender escape machine and it is that. We found it to be a really, really nice motorcycle ride and better even still, it's less than 15 grand. Now how does Yamaha go from the sporty, naked MT-09 and turn that bike into the Tracer? It does use the same engine. It's the 850cc inline three-cylinder motor. Now it's uh, fuel injected. It's been retuned slightly. It's got 115 horsepower. So when you ride the bike, it's very torquey and the power is very much suited to this style of motorcycle now. It's got longer travel suspension. and Fitting into that sub $15,000 category, well, the suspension's not fully adjustable. It's preload at both ends, you can adjust that, and you can also adjust the rebound damping. Don't expect it to do everything, but the package that Yamaha has put on this bike in the suspension department is quite good. And as I said, it's got the longer travel, and it just soaks up the road a lot better. Now, you also get panniers. When you look at the value of this bike and you bought all these bits and pieces separately you couldn't come up with 15 grand yamaha has really priced this well and to me it's a bargain tour and some of the other features are it's got abs standard traction control it's got three different power modes a manually adjustable screen these hand guards as well and led headlights and you can manually adjust the headlights separately even and that's perfect when you've got some uh Luggage in the back and you've got a pillion on. Of course, the back end squats a bit more. The headlights tend to point upwards, so you can adjust that as well. Yeah, the features a lot of other bikes have as well, but not many bikes under 15 grand have all this. Now, there's lots of room for the rider and pillion on the Tracer, and the rider gets a two position adjustable seat. You don't find yourself forced forward like a lot of bikes that have that step pillion seat, and, and that's a real benefit. Now, what that's also done is push the pillion back a bit. And this all depends on how much weight you've got on the back, of course, but it does tend to affect the rear shock in how that performs. Now, Yamaha set this bike up to be fairly plush, and it doesn't have a lot of adjustability, as I said, but overall it works quite well. But you will find that sometimes, once again, depending on the weight, it might affect it in rough conditions. Well, you know what? I reckon Yamaha has built a cracking bike with the Tracer. It sort of reminds me of the XJ900. You might as well say it's a modern XJ900. It's a bike that can do a lot of things. Now, back in the day, a lot of guys in their 30s and 40s bought an XJ900 because it could do everything pretty much. You know, weekends away like we're doing, long distance touring, and even some light sport riding as well. And Sure, you know, it, it could be better at some things, but for $15,000, I'll tell you what, it's a lot of motorcycle. For the April edition, we went to the world launch of the Yamaha YZF R1 and R1M. From one of the hottest sports bikes around, we then tested the Triumph Tiger 800 XCX, one of the most innovative and newest adventure bikes. We've also been off to Thailand to check the KTM Duke range out and jumped on one of the most exciting new touring bikes, the Victory Magnum. Also featuring in the April edition is Sultans of Slide. Then there's our regular columns, there's lots of news, there's books for sale and lots and lots more. 
Cycle Talk magazine is free at better bike shops right around Australia or download your copy. More info, cycletalk.com.au. You can win an awesome Contour Rome 3 action camera with Cycle Talk and Contour. Just go to cycletalk.com.au slash contour to enter and sign up for the Cycle Talk email newsletter while you're there. The Contour cameras will be won every week and we'll announce the winner on next week's show. I'd like to introduce you to a mate of mine, Bob. Yeah, he's a nice guy, but he's got a bit of a weight problem. See, most people call him Fat Bob. And that's because Harley Davidson named him that way. Have a look at him. Maybe he should have been called Muscle Bob. The Fat Bob name comes from being inspired by the bobbers of the 50s and 60s, all those custom made, chopped up motorcycles that people were building back in those days. So it's got 16 inch wheels, Big fat tyres, uh, wide front end, twin headlight, flat dragster style handlebars, uh, single speedo mounted on the fuel tank. Now these are the big bore bikes, 103 cubic inch engine, V-twin, air cooled, but they're much lighter and leaner than either the, uh, the Rushmore Tourers or even the soft tails. So it sits in between those Sportsters, which are even lighter again, but smaller engines. So it's the big engines, but in a, in a smaller, lighter chassis. Makes them a bit easier to throw around. And actually a bit more fun in the twisties. Now going to the back of the bike, you can see it's inspired by the dragster style of the old days. And in that tail section is LED tail lights. One of the few concessions to modernity on this motorcycle. Other touches of technology is the fuel injection and the ABS brakes. Harley doesn't make a big thing of advertising that fact. It's very much designed to look like it's come from that 60s and 70s bobber culture and I think they've done a great job of making the fat bob look muscly, strong and aggressive. So the performance matches the attitude as well. That 103 twin cam engine produces a fair bit of torque so she really goes, she does take off this machine. But the six-speed transmission means it's pretty relaxing to ride on the highway. Comfortable seat. The riding position means you pull forward a little bit, so even at uh, freeway speeds, you don't feel like you're going to get blown off the back. Forward controls mean your legs are stretched out a bit. And that makes them nice and comfortable too. The seat's pretty low, get your feet on the ground pretty easily. As a solo bike, it ticks all the boxes. This pillion seat though, a little bit small. Uh, so for short rides only, part of, the, part of the theme of the machine is that it's lean and narrow and good looking. This is a machine to enjoy by yourself and have a lot of fun on. The Fat Bob handles pretty well. However, its big drawback is the cornering clearance. The foot pegs and, your, and the back of your ankles from the corner controls scrape pretty easily. It's still a lot of fun in those corners and you can stonk out of corners with a, lots of that grunt pretty easily and have a lot of fun. Find yourself going pretty quick and you need to haul those speeds down, well she's got twin discs up the front, single disc on the back and as I mentioned before ABS. So you can haul her up reasonably quickly using the big fat controls, the big fat clutch and brake lever. Now if you're buying a bike because you love the style and you love to cruise you won't have any dramas at all. So for the Fat Bob will set you back $25,495 right away. It's a really good spec on this model too. Not only do you get everything I've mentioned, you also get security system, standard alarm, and also the keyless fob. So you just throw the key in your pocket, turn the switch on the dash here, and you're on the road. It's really convenient, bike's a lot of fun, it's raw aggressive motorcycling, and it's hard to beat. Stop dreaming and start riding. Your motorcycle adventures start at ProCycles. Graduate to a BMW for pure riding pleasure. Ride a Triumph with classic heritage styling. Add some KTM excitement on the road or dirt. Compare Suzuki's huge range in store. And when it comes to ProCycles service centres, they've been doing it right for 40 years. First time or next time, make it happen at ProCycles. Hornsby on Sydney's north side and St Peter's in the south. Everyone puts their pants on one leg at a time. What separates some of us, though, is what we throw a leg over after our pants are on. 
the new Harley-Davidson Breakout Motorcycle. Breakout. Heisenberg had a principle for it. He said that you can know where something is, or you can know where something is going, but you can't know both at the same time. You see, he reckoned that once you try to measure something, you affect the way it behaves, changing its position and final destination forever. Guess it's the same when someone tries to measure us. When they try to quantify, assess, or evaluate us, we change and we're never the same again. In a microsecond, we make a sharp turn in our trajectory. That's because life isn't determined. There's no great plan, nor one road to take. As humans, we're random, we're versatile, and we're adaptable. No matter where we are or where we're going, just when you think you've got us figured out, will continue to adapt and change. And in that, and in only that, you can be certain. The all-new versatile and adaptable MT-09. One of the most popular learner bikes over the last few years has been Kawasaki's Ninja 300. And right here, we have the Ninja 650L. It's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit more powerful, but let's see what else it offers. The Ninja 650L is urban focused and it's aimed at the commuter and learner market. But don't think that that doesn't make it interesting. There's plenty of useful technology in this build. The offset rear shock is a stylish standout and is adjustable for preload and mounts to the double pipe frame and backbone style swing arm. Neatly tucked underneath, is the slimline exhaust, which has been designed to offer a smoother ride under 7,000 revs. The LED indicators are integrated into the fairing, which makes the Ninja look more streamlined and aggressive. Instruments are comprehensive, with a big LED speedo that shows fuel range, kilometres per litre, average kilometres per litre, and two trip metres at the press of a button. The riding position is upright and the seat's comfy. That's two massive ticks right there. This means it's easy to balance at low speeds and taller riders will really appreciate the extra size of the bigger bike and will feel more comfortable spending longer times in the saddle. The engine is a liquid cool, fuel injected 649cc parallel twin. The capacity is at the higher end of the learner restrictions, but it's well geared, sitting anywhere from two to 5,000 revs in the city and five to six on the open road, which makes it a comfy ride at all speed limits. And it's perfectly tuned to the exhaust for road use. At 211 kilos, the Ninja 650L actually feels a bit lighter than that, and it makes for a really confidence-inspiring ride. I think that is because of the upright riding position and the parallel twin engine is positioned pretty low in the frame. The brake and clutch levers are adjustable for span, which is really good for different hand sizes of different riders. I didn't have to adjust it at all, though I did twist them up a bit, uh, and it just made my wrist a little bit straighter when I was riding. The model Kawasaki Asenis is in candy lime green with a metallic spark black. It's also available in the full metallic black. This bike has tank and knee protectors fitted from the Kawasaki Genuine Accessories catalogue. You can take a look at Kawasaki Australia's website to see a full list of genuine accessories.
Kawasaki Ninja 650L is available for $10,499 plus on road costs. Comes with a two year warranty. Overall, I've really enjoyed riding the Ninja 650L. If you're a learner or you've never ridden before, don't let the bigger capacity intimidate you. Once you get your license, throw your leg over one. It's so easy to ride, you'll really have a lot of fun. It's stylish, it's comfy, it's cheap to run, and all in all, it makes for another really great ninja in Kawasaki's lineup. One of the most iconic and well-respected classic motorcycles today is the Gold Star BSA, or commonly known as the Goldie. The Gold Star was BSA's most successful motorcycle. They were a 350 and 500cc single four-stroke, and they were produced between the years 1938 and 1963. So today we're going to catch up with two Gold Star owners. One owns a 500cc in Clubman trim, and the other owns a touring version of the 350. My bike is a uh, 1958 BSA 500cc. The model is a Gold Star DBD 34. I've had it for about four or five years. Gearbox on this bike is the um, legendary Double RT2, which is a close ratio gearbox. Um, this bike will do 65 miles an hour in first gear. Well, this one's set up in uh, Clubman styling with clip-on handlebars and rear set footrests. It's really a five-speed gearbox that's missing first gear because you've got such a high first gear to do 65 miles an hour. So you need to slip the clutch and rev it to make progress. To ride this bike, um, it's good to keep the revs up and um, that's when the power comes in, probably after about 4,000 revs when the power comes in really well and um, it doesn't like pottering along but um, Wonderful to ride at above 60 miles an hour. Um, it feels as though it's in its element. And it should have a GP carburetor, but it's got the Amal Concentric, which is better for road use uh, as the GP carburetor. It doesn't have a uh, idle facility. Uh, my bike is a, a 1956 uh, Gold Star 350cc DB32. It's a, it's a wonderful bike to ride. A very sweet, very sweet motor. Yes, my bike, uh, is uh, set up in touring trim, which uh, means it has standard mounting for the handlebars rather than um, the clip-on handlebars on Bill's bike. It has uh, standard foot pegs, makes for a more upright seating position, which is certainly 
more user friendly over long, longer distances. Bill's is a racing gearbox with special uh, Torrington bearings in it, uh, which makes it very good for racing, um, but a very tall first gear. Uh, mine, on the other hand, is a standard gearbox. It has a first gear that will perhaps do 30 miles an hour in, in first gear, but um, that makes it very traffic friendly uh, for general use. The BSA Gold Star was always intended to be a handcrafted, purpose-built race machine. Now these bikes could be ordered with different cylinder heads, compression ratios, different cams, exhaust systems. And when you got all of those things together in your bike, you knew that it had been thoroughly bench tested uh, by experts and you got a little, you got a piece of paper to prove it. They're a great looking bike and um, I think that's part of the attraction. Um, when we were young guys, we, most of us desired one of these machines, but we could never afford one because they were too expensive. It never leaves you the, um, the look of the Gold Star, um, particularly in Clubman's trim with the clip-ons and the swept back exhaust and the, um, the famous Gold Star muffler. Uh, the Gold Stars are mostly famous in the Isle of Man for winning um, in 350 form eight years uh, consecutively um, the Clubman's races and uh, 500 won three years on the trot. And um, if you wanted to win, you had to be on a Gold Star. As far as my attraction to the BSA goes, I, you know, it, it's a balance between um, an appreciation of fine engineering, which I, which I think the motor is, uh, it, its simplicity, uh, its beauty. I just love riding this bike when I'm on the open road and um, you start to think back as you imagine your Bernard Codd winning the two Isle of Man junior and um, senior clubman's TTs in the one day and um, you're listening to that thump of that motor because it's a real walky sound. So the BSA Gold Star legend lives on in the hearts and in the sheds of many classic motorcycle enthusiasts today. For me, I love to hear the crack of the Goldie engine when it first fires up, but better still that unmistakable roar when it's let loose on the open road. Now that is music to your ears. The winner of this week's Contour Rome 3 camera is Ian Christensen from Queensland. So go to cycletalk.com.au slash contour for your chance to win. When you put oil in your bike, you may as well as use oil produced by a company that produces oil especially dedicated for motorcycles and recreational vehicles, and that's Ipone Oil. They've been around in Europe since 1985. They produce a whole range of oils for motorcycles, snowmobiles, jet skis, all genre of motorcycle riding, extreme, road, off-road. They have over 150 products in their catalogue, so it's not just oils and lubricants, it's also fork tube oil, chain lube, shaft oil, air filter cleaning products, a whole range of stuff. Uh, the full power Katana range is a 100% synthetic oil. The big thing is esters. The esters in iPone oil has a new innovation called Speed and Easy Shift. This oil is designed so that you have smoother gear changes and better acceleration and your bike will run better. So we're going to try that out in our T100 Bonneville. We're going to use the full power Katana range for four strokes. It's for oil for high performance bikes, so the Bonneville certainly won't stretch the full capacity of this oil, but at least we have the confidence of using a good oil in our machinery. Changing the engine oil and oil filter in most modern motorcycles is a fairly easy job for anybody with a little bit of confidence in their tools and a little bit of space in the workshop to get the job done. Use your owner's manual, follow the instructions, be careful and give it a go. Be sure to warm up your bike before you change your oil. Give it plenty of time to drain out completely and use new washers to prevent any leaks. Ipone products are available from motorcycle dealers right around the country. Top quality oils and cleaning products to suit your motorcycle. Check them out at fasada.com.au.
We've stopped off at the Wickham Motorcycle Cafe for lunch. This is an iconic little Newcastle restaurant cafe. It's full of old bikes, really interesting paraphernalia, good food, and some really interesting things out the back that we want to show you now. Back in the old days, Australia was powered by the sheep. Not sure what sort of petrol they gave us, but uh, hey, it must have worked. Probably the world's coolest photo booth. Here's a scooter. Now, there's lots of green walls, but that's because you lean over here, you touch this, it starts, five, four, three, two, one, and you get on the scooter, get in a nice action shot, and there's your first picture. And it goes through and takes a whole bunch of different pictures. So we'll, we'll do that. There's a different background for each one. Look, look, bar one-handed. Who says I can't ride a scooter? One more picture, and then it processes them up. And over on the back wall behind, behind us here is thousands of these, uh, these photo booth images that have been created in this booth, and it's a real cool way to spend a few minutes. Food's not bad here at the Wickham Motorcycle Cafe either. And because I'm on a Harley, testing a Harley today, decided I'd have the shovel head. That's yeah, pretty good. The Wickham Motorcycle Cafe is in an old converted warehouse at 3 Throsby Street, Wickham, which is really close to central Newcastle. You can find out a lot more information at www.wickhammotorcycles.com or you can just drop in there for breakfast, lunch, seven days a week. And you could also give them a call on 02 4969 6525 and pick up a copy of Cycle Talk while you're there.